This is just to say. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox. And which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me they were delicious so sweet and so cold. The Red Wheelbarrow So much depends upon A red wheelbarrow Glazed with rain water Beside the white chickens Spring and all I By the road to the contagious hospital under the surge of the blue mottled clouds driven from the northeast, a cold wind Beyond, the waste of broad, muddy fields Brown with dried weeds Standing in fallen patches of standing water the scattering of tall trees. All along the road the reddish-purplish, forked, upstanding, twiggy stuff of bushes and small trees with dead, brown leaves under them leafless vines. Lifeless in appearance, sluggish dazed spring approaches. They enter the new world naked, cold, uncertain of all. Save that they enter. All about them the cold, familiar wind. Now the grass, tomorrow the stiff curl of wild carrot leaf. One by one objects are defined, it quickens, clarity, outline of leaf. But now the stark dignity of entrance, still, the profound change has come upon them, rooted, they? Grip down and begin to awaken. X. The universality of things draws me toward the candy with melon flowers that open about the edge of refuse proclaiming without accent the quality of the farmer's shoulders and his daughter's accidental skin, so sweet with clover and the small yellow chinquefoil in the parched places. It is this that engages the favorable distortion of eyeglasses that see everything and remain related to mathematics, in the most practical frame of brown celluloid made to represent tortoise eschel. A letter from the man who wants to start a new magazine made of linen. And he owns a typewriter, July 1, 1922. All this is for eyeglasses to discover. But they lie there with the gold. Earpieces folded down. Tranquilly to Takaka. Fourteen of death the barber the barber talked to me. Cutting my life with sleep to trim my hair. It's just a moment he said, we die every night. And of the newest ways to grow hair on. Bald death, I told him of the quartz. Lamp. And of old men with third sets of teeth to the queue. Of an old man who sat at the door, sunshine today. For which death shaves him twice a week. XX. The sea that encloses her young body Ulalulalu. Arms, the blazing secrecy of noon is undone in an end. The broken sand is the sound of love, the flesh is firm that turns in the sea o lolao. The sea that is cold with dead men's tears, deeply the wooing that penetrated to the edge of the sea. Returns in the plash of the waves, a wink over the shoulder large as the ocean. With wave following wave to the edge. Umbarum it is the cold of the sea broken upon the sand by the force of the moon. In the sea the young flesh playing floats with the cries of far-off men who rise in the sea. With green arms. To homage again the fields over there where the night is deep. Lalu lalu but lips too few assume the new, Meru. Underneath the sea where it is dark there is no edge so too. The dance. In Brughol's great picture, the Kermis, the dancers go round, they go round and around. The squeal and the blare and the tweedle of bagpipes, a bugle and fiddles tipping their bellies their hips and their bellies off balance to turn them. Kicking and rolling about the fair grounds, swinging their butts, those shanks must be sound to bear up under such rollicking measures, prance as they dance in Brughol's great picture, the Kermis. Landscape with the fall of Icarus. According to Brughol, when Icarus fell it was spring. A farmer was pluing his field the whole pageantry. Of the year was a wake tingling near. The edge of the sea concerned with itself. Sweating in the sun that melted the wings wax. Unsignificantly off the coast there was. A splash quite unnoticed this was Icarus drowning. The Great Figure among the rain and lights I saw the figure five in gold on the red fire truck moving tents and heated to gong clangs siren howls and wheels rumbling through the dark city. 
Complaint. They call me and I go. It is a frozen road past midnight, a dust of snow caught in the rigid wheel tracks. The door opens. I smile, enter and shake off the cold. Here is a great woman on her side in the bed. She is sick, perhaps vomiting, perhaps laboring to give birth to a tenth child. Joy. Joy. Night is a room darkened for lovers, through the jealousies the sun has sent one gold needle. I pick the hair from her eyes and watch her misery with compassion. To a poor old woman. Munching a plum on the street a paper bag of them in her hand. They taste good to her they taste good to her. They taste good to her. You can see it by the way she gives herself to the one half sucked out in her hand. Comforted a solace of ripe plums seeming to fill the air they taste good to her. Dance Russie. If I win my wife is sleeping and the baby and Kathleen are sleeping. And the sun is a flame white disc in silken mist above shining trees. If I in my north room dance naked, grotesquely before my mirror. Waving my shirt round my head and singing softly to myself, I am lonely, lonely. I was born to be lonely, I am best so. If I admire my arms, my face, my shoulders, flanks, buttocks against the yellow drawn shades, who shall say I am not the happy genius of my household? Poem As the cat climbed over the top of the jam closet first the right forefoot Carefully then the hind stepped down into the pit of the empty flower pot. Nuntuck it. Oh, lavender and yellow changed by white curtains, smell of cleanliness, sunshine of late afternoon, on the glass tray a glass pitcher, the tumbler turned down, by which a key is lying, and the immaculate white bed. The widow's lament in springtime. Sorrow is my own yard where the new grass flames as it has flamed often before but not with the cold fire. That closes round me this year. Thirty-five years I lived with my husband. The plum tree is white today with masses of flowers. Masses of flowers load the cherry branches and color some bushes yellow and some red but the grief in my heart is stronger than they for though they were my joy formerly. Today I notice them and turn away forgetting. Today my son told me that in the meadows, at the edge of the heavy woods in the distance, he saw trees of white flowers. I feel that I would like to go there. And fall into those flowers and sink into the marsh near them. A sort of a song. Let the snake wait under his weed and the writing. Be of words, slow and quick, sharp to strike, quiet to wait, sleepless through metaphor to reconcile the people and the stones. Compose. Invent. Saxifrage is my flower that splits the rocks. The young housewife. At ten. The young housewife moves about in negligee behind the wooden walls of her husband's house. I pass solitary in my car. Then again she comes to the curb to call the ice man, fish man, and stands shy, uncorseted tucking in stray ends of hair, and I compare her to a fallen leaf. The noiseless wheels of my car rush with a crackling sound over dried leaves as I bow and pass smiling. These are the desolate, dark weeks when nature in its barrenness equals the stupidity of man. The year plunges into night and the heart plunges lower than night. To an empty, windswept place without sun, stars or moon but a peculiar light as if thought. That spins a dark fire, whirling upon itself until, in the cold, it kindles. To make a man aware of nothing that he knows, not loneliness itself, not a ghost but, would be embraced, emptiness, despair, among the flashes and booms of war, houses of whose rooms. The cold is greater than can be thought, the people gone that we loved, the beds lying empty, the couches damp. The chairs unused. Hide it away somewhere out of the mind, let it get roots and grow, unrelated to jealous. Ears and eyes, for itself. In this mind they come to dig, all. Is this the counterfoil to sweetest? Music?
the source of poetry that seeing the clock stopped, says, the clock has stopped. That ticked yesterday so well? And here's the sound of lake water splashing, that is now stone. To Elsie. The pure products of America go crazy. Mountain folk from Kentucky or the ribbed north end of Jersey. With its isolate lakes and valleys, its deaf mutes, thieves' old names. And promiscuity between devil may care men who have taken to railroading. Out of sheer lust of adventure, and young slatterns, bathed in filth. From Monday to Saturday to be tricked out at night with gods. From imaginations which have no peasant traditions to give them character but flutter and flaunt. She rags, succumbing without emotion save numb terror. Under some hedge of choke cherry or viburnum. Which they cannot express. Unless it be that marriage perhaps. With a dash of Indian blood will throw up a girl so desolate so hemmed round with disease or murder. That she'll be rescued by an agent reared by the state and sent out at fifteen to work in some hard-pressed house in the suburbs. Some doctor's family, some Elsie, voluptuous water expressing with broken brain the truth about us, her great ungainly hips and flopping breasts addressed to cheap jewelry, and rich young men with fine eyes as if the earth under our feet were an excrement of some sky and we degraded prisoners destined to hunger until we eat filth while the imagination strains after deer. Going by fields of goldenrod in the stifling heat of September somehow it seems to destroy us. It is only an isolate flex that something is given off. No one to witness and adjust, no one to drive the car. The yachts Contend in a sea which the land partly encloses shielding them from the too heavy blows of an ungoverned ocean which when it chooses tortures the biggest holes, the best man knows to pit against its beatings, and sinks them pitilessly. Muff like and miss, scintillant in a minute. Brilliance of cloudless days, with broad bellying sails they glide to the wind tossing green water. From their sharp prows wall over them the crew crawls and like solicitously grooming them, releasing, making fast as they turn, lean far over and having caught the wind again, side by side, head for the mark. In a well-guarded arena of open water surrounded by lesser and greater craft which, sycophant, lumbering and flittering follow them, they appear youthful, rare. As the light of a happy eye, live with the grace of all that in the mind is fleckless, free and naturally to be desired. Now the sea which holds them is moody, lapping their glossy sides, as if feeling for some slightest flaw but fails completely. Today no race. Then the wind comes again. The yachts move, jockeying for a start, the signal is set and they are off. Now the waves strike at them but they are too well made, they slip through, though they take in canvas. Arms with hands grasping seek to clutch at the prows. Bodies thrown recklessly in the way are cut aside. It is a sea of faces about them in agony, in despair. Until the horror of the race dawns staggering the mind. The whole sea become an entanglement of watery bodies lost to the world bearing what they cannot hold. Broken. Beaten, desolate, reaching from the dead to be taken up they cry out, failing, failing. Their cries rising in waves still as the skillful yachts pass over. To awaken an old lady. Old age is a flight of small cheeping birds skimming bare trees above a snow glaze. Gaining and failing they are buffeted by a dark wind, but what? On harsh weed stalks the flock has rested, the snow is covered with broken seed husks. And the wind tempered with a shrill piping of plenty. Portrait of a lady. Your thighs are apple trees whose blossoms touch the sky. Which sky? The sky where Washo hung a lady's slipper. Your knees are a southern breeze, or a gust of snow. Ah! Uh, what sort of man was Fragonard? As if thou answered anything. Ah, yes, below the knees, since the tune drops that way, it is. One of those white summer days, the tall grass of your ankles flickers upon the shore, which shore? 
The sand clings to my lips, which shore? Uh, petals maybe. How should I know? Which shore? Which shore? I said petals from an apple tree. Between walls. The back wings of the hospital where nothing will grow lie cinders in which shine the broken pieces of a green bottle. Burning the Christmas greens. Their time passed, pulled down correct and flung to the fire. Go up in a roar. All recognition lost, burnt clean clean in the flame, the green dispersed, a living red, flame red, red as blood wakes on the ash. And ebbs to a steady burning the rekindled bed become a landscape of flame. At the winter's midnight we went to the trees, the coarse holly, the balsam and the hemlock for their green. At the thick of the dark the moment of the cold's deepest plunge we brought branches cut from the green trees. To fill our need, and over doorways, about paper Christmas bells covered with tin foil and fastened by red ribbons. We stuck the green prongs and the windows hung. Woven wreaths and above pictures the living green. On the Those hemlock sprays put a herd of small white deer as if they were walking there. All this. And it seemed gentle and good to us. Their time passed, relief. The room bare. We stuffed the dead grate with them upon the half burnt out logs smoldering eye, opening red and closing under them. And we stood there looking down. Green is a solace, a promise of peace, a fort against the cold, though we did not say so, a challenge above the snow's hard shell. Green that, where? Small birds hide and dodge and lift their plaintive rallying cries, blocks for them and knocks down. The unseeing bullets of the storm. Green spruce boughs pulled down by a weight of snow, transformed. Violence leapt and appeared. Recreant. Roared to life as the flame rose through and our eyes recoiled from it. In the jagged flames green to red, instant and alive. Green. Those sure abutments. Gone. Lost to mind. And quick in the contracting tunnel of the great appeared a world. Black mountains, black and red, as yet uncolored, an ash white, an infant landscape of shimmering ash and flame. And we, in that instant, lost, breathless to be witnesses, as if we stood ourselves refreshed among the shining fauna of that fire. Queen Anne's Lace Her body is not so white as anemone petals nor so smooth, nor so remote a thing. It is a field of the wild carrot taking the field by force. The grass does not raise above it. Here is no question of whiteness, white as can be, with a purple mole at the center of each flower. Each flower is a hand span of her whiteness. Wherever his hand is lain there is a tiny purple blemish. Each part is a blossom under his touch to which the fibers of her being stem one by one, each to its end, until the whole field is a white desire, empty, a single stem, a cluster, flower by flower, a pious wish to whiteness gone over, or nothing. The Poem It's all in the sound. A song. Seldom a song. It should be a song, made of particulars, wasps, a gentian. Something immediate, open. Scissors, a lady's eyes, waking centrifugal, centripetal. Pastoral. The little sparrows hop ingenuously about the pavement quarreling with sharp voices over those things that interest them. But we who are wiser shut ourselves in on either hand and no one knows whether we think good or evil. Meanwhile, The old man who goes about gathering dog lime walks in the gutter without looking up and his tread is more majestic than that of the Episcopal minister approaching the pulpit of a Sunday. These things astonish me beyond words. The last words of my English grandmother. There were some dirty plates and a glass of milk beside her on a small table near the rank, disheveled bed. Wrinkled and nearly blind she lay and snarled rousing with anger in her tones to cry for food. Give me something to eat, they're starving me, I'm all right, I won't go to the hospital. No, no, no. 
Give me something to eat. Let me take you to the hospital, I said and after you are well. You can do as you please. She smiled. Yes you do what you please first then I can do what I please. Oh, oh, oh. She cried as the ambulance men lifted her to the stretcher. Is this what you call? Making me comfortable? By now her mind was clear. Oh you think you're smart you young people. She said, but I'll tell you you don't know anything. Then we started. On the way. We passed a long row of elms. She looked at them a while out of the ambulance window and said, What are all those fuzzy looking things out there? Trees? Well, I'm tired of them and rolled her head away. The term. A rumpled sheet of brown paper about the length. An apparent bulk of a man was rolling with the wine slowly over and over in the street as a car drove down upon it and crushed it to the ground. Unlike a man it rose again rolling with the wind over and over to be as it was before. The dance. When the snow falls the flakes spin upon the long axis that concerns them most intimately two and two to make a dance. The mind dances with itself, taking you by the hand, your lover follows there are always two. Yourself and the other. The point of your shoe setting the pace, if you break away and run the dance is over. Breathlessly you will take another partner. Better or worse who will keep at your side, at your stops. Whirls and glides until he too leaves off on his way down as if there were another direction. Gayer, more carefree. Spinning face to face but always down with each other secure only in each other's arms. But only the dance is sure. Make it your own. Who can tell? What is to come of it? In the woods of your own nature whatever twig interposes, and bare twigs have an actuality of their own. This flurry of the storm that holds us, plays with us and discards us dancing, dancing as may be credible. The pot of flowers. Pink confused with white flowers and flowers reversed take and spill the shaded flame darting it back into the lamp's horn. Petals a slant darkened with mauve red where in whirls petal lays its glow upon petal round flamma green throats. Petals radiant with transpiercing light contending. Reaching up their modest green from the pot's rim. And there, wholly dark, the pot gay with rough moss. The descent. The descent beckons. As the ascent beckoned. Memory is a kind of accomplishment a sort of renewal even. An initiation, since the spaces it opens are new places inhabited by hordes. Heretofore unrealized of new kinds. Since their movement. Are toward new objectives. No defeat is made up entirely of defeat. Since the world it opens is always a place formerly unsuspected, a world lost, a world unsuspected, beckons to new places and no whiteness is so white as the memory of whiteness. With evening, love wakens though its shadows, which are alive by reason of the sunshining, grow sleepy now and drop away from desire. Love without shadow stirs no beginning to awaken as night advances. The descent. Made up of despairs. And without accomplishment realizes a new awakening. Which is a reversal of despair. For what we cannot accomplish, what is denied to love. What we have lost in the anticipation, a descent follows, endless and indestructible. Young Sycamore. I must tell you this young tree, whose round and firm trunk between the wet pavement and the gutter rises bodily into the air with one unchalant thrust half its height, and then dividing and waning sending out young branches on all sides, hung with cocoons it thins, till nothing is left of it but two eccentric knotted twigs bending forward horn-like at the top. The poor by constantly tormenting them with reminders of the lice in their children's hair, the school physician first brought their hatred down on him. But by this familiarity they grew used to him, and so, 
at last, took him for their friend and advisor. The rose. The rose is obsolete, but each petal ends in an edge, the double facet cementing the grooved columns of air. The edge cuts without cutting meats, nothing, renews itself in metal or porcelain. Whither? It ends, but if it ends the start is begun so that to engage roses becomes a geometry. Sharper, neater, more cutting figured in majolica, the broken plate glazed with a rose. Somewhere the sense makes copper roses still roses. The rose carried weight of love but love is at an end, of roses. It is at the edge of the petal that love waits. Crisp, work to defeat laboredness, fragile plucked, moist, half-raised cold, precise, touching. What? The place between the petal's edge and the Edge a line starts that being of steel infinitely fine, infinitely rigid penetrates the Milky Way without contact, lifting from it, neither hanging nor pushing. The fragility of the flower unbruised penetrates space. Proletarian portrait A big young bar headed woman in an apron. Her hair slick back standing on the street. One stalking foot towing the sidewalk. Her shoe in her hand. Looking intently into it, she pulls out the paper and so to find the nail that has been hurting her. Tracked. I will teach you, my townspeople, how to perform a funeral, for you have it over a troop of artists. Unless one should scour the world, you have the ground sense necessary. See. The hearse leads. I begin with a design for a hearse. For Christ's sake, not black, nor white either and not polished. Let it be weathered, like a farm wagon, with gilt wheels or no wheels at all. A rough dray to drag over the ground. Knock the glass out. My God, glass, my townspeople. For what purpose? Is it for the dead to look at or for us to see how well he is housed or to see the flowers or the lack of them, or what? To keep the rain and snow from him. He will have a heavier rain soon pebbles and dirt and what not. Let there be no glass, and no upholstery, few. And no little brass rollers. And small easy wheels on the bottom, my townspeople what are you thinking of? A rough plain hearse then with gilt wheels and no top at all. On this the coffin lies by its own weight. No wreaths please, especially no hothouse flowers. Some common memento is better. Something he prized and is known by, his old clothes, a few books perhaps, God knows what. You realize how we are about these things my townspeople. Something will be found, anything even flowers if he had come to that. So much for the hearse. For heaven's sake though see to the driver. Take off the silk hat. In fact that's no place at all for him, up there unceremoniously. Dragging our friend out to his own dignity. Bring him down, bring him down. Though an inconspicuous. I'd not have him ride on the wagon at all, damn him. The undertaker's under strapper. Let him hold the reins and walk at the side and inconspicuously too. Then briefly as to yourselves, walk behind, as they do in France, seventh class, or if your eyed hell take curtains. Go with some show of inconvenience. Sit openly, to the weather as to grief. Or do you think you can shut grief in? What, from us? We who have perhaps nothing to lose? Share with us. Share with us, it will be money in your pockets. Go now I think you are ready. The ivy crown. The whole process is a lie, unless. Crowned by excess, it break forcefully one way or another. From its confinement, or find a deeper well. Antony and Cleopatra are right. They have shown. The way. I love your I do not live at all. Daffodil time. Is past. This is. Summer, summer. The heart says. And not even the full of it. No doubts are permitted. Though they will come in May before our time overwhelm us. We are only mortal but being mortal. Can defy our fate. 
we may by an outside chance even when we do not look to see John Quills and Violets come again. But there are, still, the roses. Romance has no part in it. The business of love is cruelty which, by our wills, to live together. It has its seasons. For and against. Whatever the heart fumbles in the dark to assert. Toward the end of May. Just as the nature of Briars is to tear flesh, I have proceeded through them. Keep the Briars out, they say. You cannot live and keep free of Briars. Children pick flowers, let them, though having them in hand. They have no further use for them but leave them crumpled at the curb's edge. At our age the imagination. Across the sorry facts lifts us to make roses. Stand before thorns. Sure love is cruel. And selfish. And totally obtuse, at least, blinded by the light, young love is. But we are older, I to love. And you to be loved, we have. No matter how. By our will survive to keep the jeweled prezi always. At our fingertips. We will it so. And so it is. Past all accident. The locust tree in flower. Among of green. Stiff old bright. Broken branch come. White sweet may. Again.